everybody. I'm Levi Litvay from Central European University, and I am speaking to a very, very special guest, uh, somebody who is always a joy to read and uh, and hear from. This is Hans Georg Betz, uh, who is uh, joining uh, today. Say hi. Hi. <laughs> so, okay, so so I dug up one of your old articles. Uh, and uh, this article is titled uh, The New Politics of Resentment, the Radical Right-Wing Populist Parties in Western Europe. And it's in comparative politics. It's from 1993. And I dug up this article because I wanted to give it to my students who were born after 1993, mostly. And I uh, wanted to show that all these things that people talk about right now about resentment, this is older than they are so uh, and and you were you were one of the pioneers of this you were at the forefront of this so i figured let's talk about this article because it's a really really fun one it uh, it like predates the current conceptions of populism but it's already it's already it's already a, 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 a classic so tell us tell us about this article please uh, what, what's the backstory of this why did you write it <laughs> what's the backstory of this <laughs> Well, I have to say, I may have to get a, get a start. You know, I mean, one of the most amazing things for me actually is that it is still being cited. Yeah. You know, and I mean, it's uh, important. It's actually, it's actually one of the articles, it's the most cited article I've ever written. Uh, article is it? Written. Uh, I mean, I wrote a, wrote a book based on, on the extension of the thing. Uh, but uh, that was it. And, and, and I have to say, I mean, at the time when I wrote it and when it was published, I had friends of mine who, who, who basically had also written on, on the extreme right, radical right, and all this kind of stuff. And they said to me, I mean, what are you talking about populism? This isn't populism, this is right wing extremism. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, the other kind of thing is, I mean, why do you bother with these, these parties? They're going to be gone in no <laughs> time. I'm serious. I mean, they're yeah. going to be gone in no time. As a matter of fact, uh, 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 if I remember right, it's. Uh, What's this guy from Sweden? I forgot. Uh, uh, there, there, is a, there was this book on, on, on West European politics, basically, and they refer mm -hmm. to these parties as flash parties. They come, they, you know, kind of, you know, as uh, a Strohfeuer, as we say in German, you know, <laughs> they burn, you know, and then they kind of uh, disappear. Uh huh. Well, they didn't. And I mean, yeah. if anybody had told me that in 2021, I was still writing on these things, I would have said, you got to be kidding me, you know, but I still do. I still write on these things. Uh, and uh, the most amazing thing also for me is that literally every day I receive, you know, another either article or paper, who knows what, on some aspect of, 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 of populism and particular radical right wing populism. Now, that certainly was not the case at the time, because, I mean, these parties, literally, I mean, at the time, I mean, there were these fringe parties, which only, uh, you know, I mean, there were, there were these people in, particularly in Germany, who were into right-wing extremism, or what we in Germany we call rechtsextremismus, or rechtsradicalismus. And that had a lot to do, of course, with German history. I mean, anything in, in, in Germany, even if they only get 0.5% uh, of the vote, uh, uh, like the NPD and whatnot, I mean, but that was seen kind of as a potential danger to the free uh, democratic liberal kind of order in Germany. And so, I mean, people were interested in these kind of things, but generally it was, it was just a cottage industry as far as I was concerned, you know. Mm -hmm. Now, how did, I, how did I get into this? I mean, actually I got into it through my dissertation. <laughs> I wrote mm -hmm. actually my dissertation on the Greens, on the German okay. Greens. Okay. And as I was writing on these kind of things, I mean, I, I wrote my dissertation in very, I mean, I, I, I wrote about things which were happening, which were going on. And what happened in the 1980s, in, in late 70s, early 1980s in Germany was that there was a, a growing, in the, in the context of the peace movement, there was, I mean, there, there was this confrontation uh, at the time between the Soviets and the Americans, particularly over the stationing of new, uh, 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 relatively short range nuclear missiles in Europe. Uh, the so called Doppelbeschluss, uh, the double mm -hmm. uh, 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 decision. Uh, and in this kind of context, in the, in the peace movement kind of context, suddenly there were people on the left 
who fundamentally said the only way basically we can get out of this is German unification and then turning this Germany into a neutral country. And suddenly mm -hmm. what happens in, in, in Germany is that is, is on the fringes basically of the green left, you get a kind of a new type of nationalism. Now at the same time, you get on the other side, on, 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 on the kind of margins of, of, of the conservative center right in the Christian Democrats and whatnot, you get people who also basically start writing about these kind of things. Um, a couple of other things happened. I mean, there was a, a, a East Germany at the time was, was basically almost collapsing. And uh, I'm from Bavaria, and the minister president of Bavaria, who was a staunch anti-communist, Franz Josef Strauss, he basically went to East Berlin and, 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 and accorded them a one billion credit. And there were all these people in the, in, in, among the Christian Democrats, particularly Christian Social Union, which is the sister party in Bavaria, who were up in arms, basically. I mean, this was a sellout to communism, blah, 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 all this kind of stuff. Uh, and it's in this kind of situation uh, of, of growing in Bavaria, of growing kind of resentment uh, uh, against the Christian Social Union and against Strauss, that this party kind of comes up called the Republicana, the Republicans, mm -hmm. okay? These were, these were basically a bunch of disgruntled CSU kind of types. Uh, uh, who said that's it? They, you know, I mean, we have to found a, a really conservative kind of anti-communist kind of party. Now, something else happened at the time uh, in Bavaria, and uh, I, and this is when the whole thing kind of becomes a little bit personal because on Bavarian television, every month was a program uh, which was called Jetzt Red Ich, or in Bavarian Jetzt Red Ich. It's my turn to talk now. And what happened uh -huh. it was kind of a town hall meeting. Uh, a television crew would go to a town and they would invite a local politician and then people, ordinary people from the town and they would basically pose uh, uh, questions. They would vent their grievances and who knows what. And uh, the, uh, the moderator of this was a, uh, was a, a journalist who actually was a left-wing journalist by the name of Franz Schönhuber. Mm -hmm. Now, Franz Schönhuber, he, had, he, was connect, he was from Munich, he co was connected to anybody in the, both the Social Democrats and the Christian Social Union. He was a journalist for the, the München Abendzeitung, which was a left-wing, a center-left-wing kind of uh, boulevard uh, uh, newspaper. Uh, uh, so he was a, he was a, a very well-established and very well-known kind of personality. Uh, now he uh, made the big mistake, you know, to write a book. Uh -huh. And that book was called Ich war dabei. I was one of them. Okay? Mm -hmm. In which he recounted his adventures uh, during the Second World War as a member of the Waffen SS. Okay? Mm -hmm. And he, there were passages in there which kind of could be construed as glorifying, you know, I mean, this was kind of like you know, this adventurous kind of thing, it was all fun, blah, 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 kind of stuff. Uh, that, of course, created a big, uh, 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 a big uh, scandal in, in Bavaria, and he was fired by the Bavarian uh, 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 Television Corporation. He was, he became literally a persona non grata from one day to the next. The CSU dropped him and whatnot. And so, because he had this, it was a very personal kind of uh, resentment, which he did this again, this resentment kind of thing that he had been, he was treated unjustly, uh, that uh, uh, he was, uh, uh, that all these people who in the past wanted to be his friends now dropped him. Uh, so he joined the Republicana and he became the kind of the, the poster child of the Republican. I mean, nobody knew these ex-CSU kind of, but Schönhofer, that was somebody. And then he, he, his kind of thing was to transform the Republican into something like the Front National, with him mm -hmm. becoming kind of the pendant of uh, uh, Jean-Marie Le Pen, okay? 
Now, uh, the funny thing was, I mean, that I, uh, uh, I came home one day from during vacation and uh, uh, I told my parents about it and they said, oh, you, you're the general secretary of the Republicana. He lives on the other side of the street. <laughs> I'm serious. He lived on the other side of the street. So I rang the doorbell and said, this is blah, blah, blah. And so he said to me, you want to talk to Franz Schoenhuber? And I said, sure. And he said, called Franz Schoenhuber and said, I have this you know, young man here who you know, is doing a doctorate at, at, at MIT in the United States. You know, could you talk to him? And that's in how I ended up basically uh, 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 writing on the Republicana in my dissertation. Okay. <laughs> now, uh, as a result of that, Actually, I started to learn about other parties because the Republicana made these overtures, particularly the Front National. So mm -hmm. I started reading up on the Front National. And at the time, again, there wasn't written all that much on the Front National. I mean, there were two or three articles in American, major American journals, among them one in, in, in comparative politics. But yeah, no, not very much. And you really had to know French in order to basically understand these kind of things. Uh, and then a bunch of books came out in Germany on uh, uh, talking about uh, uh, putting the Republican in, in a larger kind of context. So I started to learn, you know, I mean, for example, uh, the most uh, uh, interesting ones actually at the time were the so-called progress parties, the Fremskis and the Fremskis party in, in Denmark and in Norway. There was uh, uh, then a party in Sweden called New Democratie. Uh, so I started getting, you know, all these kind of kind kind of part, reading up on them and whatnot, and, and making connect, and, and writing to people uh, in, in 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 Norway and in Denmark who, who were working on these kind of things like uh, Gull Anderson, for example, in, in Aarhus. And then uh, uh, I got a job in in in, uh, in in Milwaukee at Marquette, and and when I was at Marquette. I had the opportunity to go to the Marquette is a Catholic university. Mm -hmm. uh, Catholic universities basically send students to a, a, a center in Rome, in Italy, uh, which is run by Loyola University of Chicago. And mm -hmm. uh, they needed somebody to teach West European policies. They asked me, you know, would you like to answer? I, I went there. And as it so well, this was the time of the Great Revolution in, 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 at the time. And that was in the early 1990s. And the big thing was the Lega Nord. Mm -hmm. okay? So I got into the Lega Nord and, 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 and started, actually, I spent hours and hours every day basically watching uh, 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 television. There was a, a program in, in, at night, at uh, 10 at night, called uh, Milano Italia, with a left-wing uh, uh, journalist called Gad Lerner. And he virtually every day had somebody from the Lega there and they had this, this talks, it was a talk show and whatnot. So I learned a lot about the Lega Nord. Uh, um, and so one thing kind of led to the other and there was, I had a colleague who was Canadian and he said to me, oh yeah, we have, you write on these kind of things. Yeah, we have this guy Preston Manning out in, 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 in uh, uh, the Western part of Canada, his reform party. So I said, well, next time you go there, you know, could you bring me materials? So I brought me this book and all kinds of stuff. So it expanded, the whole thing expanded. And then, uh, were, you know, then came the big, big uh, thing of the FPÖ. Yeah. Which uh, with your title. So, uh, yeah. uh, and I knew people. I already knew people in the FPÖ, but then when, when, when your Kaida became the thing, I mean, then I actually was in Vienna. Well, I don't know whether it's still in the Kantnerstraße at the time, the office was in the Kantnerstraße. So I went to the office a couple of times. Uh, uh, then somebody told me about the Vlamsblock. So I went to, to Brussels and I went to their headquarters. And before I knew it, I had all these political parties and whatnot. And, and then I had to, you know, I mean, there was a question, I mean, you know, how to, you know, what to do with it. And then I came up with this kind of notion, which comes actually from the Scandinavian parties, because they were the most populist, in mm -hmm. a sense, uh, 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 and, uh, and put this under, under this kind of radical right in populism. Uh, and then with this kind of notion of resentment. Now, the problem was that I, I wrote actually had this great title, the policy, so I had absolutely no idea what resentment was all about. 
you know, mm -hmm. and uh, as a matter of fact, when I uh, did the research for for uh, the introduction to this collected volume I did uh, on, on, on these parties, actually, I tr at the time, I mean, I, I tried to find stuff on the research. There were just not very much on resentment. This is because the, so the social science wasn't interested in emotions. Emotions yeah. were something irrational, you know, I mean, you know, kind of stuff. So, you know. And it was only afterwards, once uh, uh, once the economists started getting into emotions, and uh, and uh, uh, also political philosoph uh, political philosophers or political theorists got into the role of emotions as mechanisms, basically, uh, uh, mm -hmm. that there was more out there, and you could actually. I mean, then I started actually understanding, for example, I mean, the difference between what the British mean by resentment and what uh, uh, Nietzsche, who is credited basically with this mm. ressentiment, that the two things are not the same basically. Uh, 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 but at the time, I mean, I, I really, I was relatively clueless on a lot of these things. And the other thing was also that in terms of material, there was not, not very much out there. I mean, the, these parties, I mean, except for the Danes, I mean, the, one should forget the Franskist party at one point got 30%, out of nowhere got 30% of the vote. Uh, about uh, the other parties, I mean, the Front National was a 2% party until yeah. 86, when it, it really, I mean, it, it went up to 8% to of the vote. Uh, 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 the FPÖ was a five, six, seven percent percent party until until Haider. In the country where I live now, in Switzerland, the SVP uh, was a, a ten percent party. I mean, if in, in if the SVP got one percent more, it was a, a landslide kind of victory. You know, at the time. <laughs> now, of course, they went from ten percent to over thirty percent of the vote within one and a half decades. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, but these parties were, you know, they, they were kind of marginal. Yeah, I mean, into in, 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 in the party system, the Vlams block never got more than ten percent of the vote. Uh, uh, in general, I mean, they did better in Antwerp, where they would get 25, 30 percent of the vote. But generally, I mean, I mean, in even the Lega Nord, I mean, the Lega Nord was 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 a northern kind of phenomenon on a, a national kind of scale. They would get seven, eight, nine percent of the vote. Uh, but in 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 Lombardia or in Veneto, I mean, they will get twenty five percent of the vote and and, and whatnot. Uh, uh, so it, it was not really, uh, and the impact was was all. It was not that there was a great impact of these parties uh, uh, on the on the national kind of discussion. Uh, uh, quite the opposite. I mean, there was this this kind of uh, except in Italy. I mean, the Lega is a different issue because the whole party system collapsed. But in, in, in Belgium, for example, the Vlamsburg was completely isolated. Uh, yeah. Even in the Scandinavian parties, I mean, they were just, as we say in German, nicht salonfähig. Mm -hmm. uh, and that only changed uh, uh, then with, with particularly the FPÖ getting into a, a coalition government with the FLP. The Lega Nord getting into all of these Berlusconi governments. Uh, yeah. uh, that uh, uh, things kind of changed, uh, uh, but I mean, if you look at the Front National, I mean, the Front National, until today in the press, I mean, they will not say Le Front National, I mean, anyway, it's called the Rassemblement National, but they would not say, they will say, no, l'extreme droite Front National, okay, the extreme right wing Front National, yeah. okay. So they were not seen as a, uh, a kind of uh, kosher party, yeah. Mm -hmm. They were, you know, and they even if they got 20, 25 percent of the vote, I mean, they were, it was just, you know, I mean, something yeah. to be avoided, you know, uh, uh, and that has to a large degree changed. I mean, if you look now, you know, I mean, Salvini, for example, he was in a coalition government with Cinque Stelle, I mean, Strache, before he got discredited, was was in an UVP, uh, UVP, uh, FPÖ kind of government. Uh, uh, the Norwegians were in, 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 in government uh, uh, together with the moderate right. Uh, so the, uh, and, 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 and the Vlams belong nowadays, I mean, they're desperately trying to be included basically in the grand coalition in, 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 yes. in Belgium. And I mean, yeah. maybe for good reasons, because they say, I mean, we represent about 10% of, of, of voters and whatnot. 
but that certainly was not the case at the time. Yeah. yeah. But the, at yeah. the other, uh, uh, at the same time, one has to say, you know, I mean, it, it, you know, when you, you look now at what people write, I mean, they write as if, you know, there's a, this wave of, of, of radical populism never seen, be, you've got to be kidding me. I mean, the, 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 the FPÖ went from 10% to over 30% of the vote. And within a very short period of time, the Lega Nord went from nowhere to become uh, 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 one of the most important political movements, parties, whatever, in, in Italy within a very short period of time. Yeah. You know, uh, the SVP in Switzerland went from 10% to 34, 33, 34% of, of, of the vote within, you know, 15 years or so. Okay, which fundamentally changed the, the, the arithmetic of, of the coalitions of the consociational kind of system as we have it in Switzerland. Okay, and this was way before 2008. There was way before, you know, this pandemic, blah, 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 all this kind of stuff, you know, I mean, they've been around. Yeah. The, Lega, the Lega is now the oldest still existing, existing original party in, in Italy, you know. You know, all the other ones are, you know, who knows what, you know, I mean, absolutely. Uh, uh, the Front, I mean, the, you know, I mean, for, for the Rassemblement National, I mean, the Front National was founded in, in, in 72. Yeah. It's been, it's, I mean, in the meantime, you know, the communists have disappeared virtually. The, uh, the, the, the Rassemblement Républicain, you know, the typical goal is kind of, they've kind of disappeared, but the Front National is still around. Yeah. Okay. I mean, so and and to say, I mean, they, these are established parties. Yes. Absolutely established parties. You know, I mean, they 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 do represent absolutely the, the establishment, which is kind of hilarious when I mean the anti-established. No, they're not anti. They are the establishment. You know, yeah. Well. Well, I mean, Fidesz has been running Hungary for ten years, and they can still sell this message, no problem. So. Right. So okay. So let's let let's run down on the on the on the themes in the article. So uh, so you know you give you give a very nice historical background, which uh, I would I could not have hoped for a better summary of that and more uh, with what you just said. Um, but then you move to racism as probably one of the underlying factors for their support. So. Can, I think it's straightforward, but uh, but uh, let's talk about it. So. <laughs> yeah. Uh, first of all, you know I'm German. Yeah. And 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 for us, I mean, for me as a German, racism means something different from from probably other people. Mm -hmm. For me, racism, I mean, there are two things. I mean, the, the, the easy one is to say racism means basically you believe that, first of all, there are races, which in itself is a kind of disputed kind of, kind of notion that they are races. But in the United States, basically, I mean, they do have race as a, as a characteristic. So whatever. Uh, mm -hmm. And secondly, that not all races are the same. They are superior and inferior races, okay? And that actually, I mean, it goes into, I, I was just uh, writing a piece basically on, on, on uh, anti-Asian anti, anti -Asian, uh, violence and whatnot, in which I basically uh, uh, mentioned that, the, you know, I mean, Mary, who together with Herstein a couple of decades ago wrote this book on the bell curve on IQ, I mean, he says actually, you know, I mean, the whites are not the the on the top of the thing. It's actually the Asians. <laughs> the Asians are mm -hmm. kind of the IQs are higher than the, than the, than the, than whites. You know? But there is this kind of notion, you know. I mean, here you look at like, genetics, you know, all this kind of stuff. I mean, that that's that's inferior and superior, and this is what American racism was all about. In 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 coming out of of, of slavery, basically, I mean, you know, blacks just are inferior. And that's just the mm -hmm. way it is. And interesting enough, if you look at, at, at the United States, I mean, the question of racism is, is it, it, it's actually a very interesting thing because, for example, there was an anti-Irish racism because the Irish were considered black. 
Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it was not until until uh, uh, the end of the 19th century that the Irish became white. Yes. Okay. They were integrated kind of, you know, they became this honorable kind of whites. And the same thing goes to many other uh, immigrant groups that there, there was all kinds of, there was anti, I mean, anti-Asian, I mean, I actually, if, you know, uh, if you look at what happens in California in, 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 in the 1870s, 1880s, it's exactly the same kind of rhetoric as was against the Irish in the 1830s, 1840s. Yes. Uh, uh, so there was, a, I mean, they were also considered, I mean, the, the, they were just considered inferior. They had never yes. changed. They were basically just, you could not do anything with these Chinese, for example, okay? Now that's one kind of racism. The other kind of racism is actually what the Nazis were all about. And that was not the notion of inferior and superior. Yes, it was also, I mean, they considered Poles and, and Slavs and whatnot as, as, as inferior. But underneath the whole thing was, was that it was kind of a Marxism uh, type of argument that all history is a history of uh, struggle between races. And different races basically have different uh, strategies and the Jews have the most uh, kind of uh, a devious kind of strategy. They are like, like bacilli who are infecting the, the, and then they basically kill you know, the host kind of people from the inside. And this is why you have to kill, exterminate basically, as you would exterminate uh, rats because they carry the plague. You have to exterminate the Jews, uh, uh, and which ultimately ends in the Holocaust, okay? And that yes. is a funda that's a fundamentally different kind of notion and this racism, well, you know, I mean, you say, you know, you dirty, who knows what, now, that's racism. Yes, that is also kind of thing, but, but it's, I mean, there are gradations. Uh, in all of this. Now, when you look at the, at, at the radical right, I mean, it, it, it really depends. It depends on, 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 on these, these kind of parties. Uh, I mean, certainly, I mean, the Front National under Le Pen, there was a lot of anti-Semitism and his most mm -hmm. famous, I mean, you know, I mean, that uh, the Holocaust was just a footnote in, in the history of the Second World War or his puns, his plays on words, on, on crematoire, uh, uh, all of these kind of things. I mean, it, 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 and it was this this kind of uh, uh, Monty Python nudge nudge kind of wink wink kind of uh, yeah. anti-Semitism to those who knew who know about this kind of stuff. Yeah, the but soup kitchens cases, always I mean, the soup kitchens always put the pork in the soup just to make sure. <laughs> yeah, but in other kind of cases, I mean, certainly, I mean, there was not. I mean, this type of thing. I mean, anti-Semitism was not uh, was not an issue. Uh, and actually, I mean, you get very funny kind of kind of stories in, in all of this. The Vlams block, for example, because it's mm -hmm. so strong in Antwerp, it, 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 it promotes itself then as actually the protector of the Jewish community in Antwerp because it's very strong and politically important. Uh, 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 so uh, uh, on the other kind of side, of course, I mean, the... the um, the, the, the populist right, I mean, of course, nowadays we associate the populist rights with immigration. Yes. But that was not the case initially. It was the case with the Front National, but it certainly was not the case for, 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 for the Scandinavian parties. It was not the yeah. case for, for the, for the Leganor. It was not even the case for the FP at the beginning and the Hydra. It was only once uh, 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 it became clear that immigration, which by the way, I mean, didn't exist anyway, you know, uh, that immigration would become, could become a, a kind of a, a, an issue uh, around which you could uh, uh, mobilize that these, these, these parties basically discovered and adopted it. And I, I'll give you an example. I, 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 uh, uh, I forgot when it was in, in my opinion, in the early, in the early 1990s, uh, I was at a conference and Heidi Schmidt, who was the uh, uh, vice uh, uh, head of the FPÖ with Haida and then left the FPÖ uh, uh, to, to form a new political party called the Liberale Forum, the Liberal Forum. Uh, and she was actually the candidate of the FPÖ for president at one point. 
Uh, so I, I was chatting with her and they said, uh, uh, Frau, Schm uh, Frau Schmidt, you know, I mean, I, I, you know, I know if you don't want to tell me, don't tell me, you know, but did you have at one point a meeting where you said, we really have to kind of now focus on immigration? And she said, you're absolutely right. <laughs> this is what <laughs> happened. Okay. And actually, if you look at, if you, uh, 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 there's a, 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 an Italian uh, a writer who at the time wrote on the, on, on the Lega Nord, he wrote this book, uh, Lombardi alla Nuova Crociata, I think it was called, uh, in which he said, and then there was a conference and we, uh, and they decided to basically now we should go contra i neri e gli arabi, against the blacks and the Arabs. Before that, <laughs> that was not the issue. Yeah, absolutely not the issue. For the Lega Nord, it wasn't Arabs or Blacks. It was the Southerners. It was the Siciliani, yes. and it was the, the so-called Terroni. You know, all these mm -hmm. these 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 the Southerners who had moved basically to the north, uh, and because they had so many children, well, certainly more children than Northerners, got you know preference when it came to to uh, uh, social housing and all of this kind of stuff. And at the same time, the Northerners had to basically subsidize them. Uh, yeah. And, you know, I mean, the, the political parties in Rome then used basically the Northern money in order to buy votes in the South, okay? Mm -hmm. um, so this, this, these kind of things were not, uh, these kind of things were not an issue. And I also, I mean, I, I, I don't, I, I don't really think that racism is an appropriate way. I mean, there's xenophobia, certainly. Mm -hmm. But this kind of notion of, of in superiority, inferior, and were not, I, 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 would, I would have a hard time to find something in speeches and or not where, where these kind of things are expressed. There is something, I mean, and, and now it's, you know, I mean, but uh, this is Tagiev started writing about these kind of things. Uh, 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 but it comes actually from from Aradi Ben uh, uh, who was the big big uh, ideologue uh, of, of the Nouvelle Droite in in France, who basically, I mean, he said, no, I mean, this is not about racism; it's about difference. Okay, mm -hmm. and actually, there is a, a statement by by, for example, De Winter. Uh, uh, who was at the time the big man in, in the Vlaams blog where he said, uh, 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 you know, you know, it's not that they are, you know, better or worse or whatnot, we are just all different, okay? Mm -hmm. And this was this kind of notion, you know, I mean, here, you know, I mean, I like the Turks as long as they're in Turkey, okay? <laughs> but we have nothing yeah. against Turks. I mean, Turks are perfectly nice kind of people, but we just don't want them here, okay? Yes. And this is what, what Tagiev and, 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 and others call, then call this kind of differentialism, a differentialist kind of racism, uh, which, which is very prevalent. And it becomes particularly prevalent then with the growing, not only presence, but particular visibility of Muslim minorities in Western Europe, where suddenly this kind of notion of difference becomes central. Now this is also not this is not uh, particularly new because this is exactly what happened in the U.S. already in the 18, 1830s when Catholics uh, when the Irish and, and Southern Germans come and they are Catholics and the notion yes. is they are different mm -hmm. they don't fit you know we are a Protestant country okay and you get actually I mean if you read uh, uh, if you read and I've done a hell of a lot of reading basically on the 1830s, 1840s and Catholic pamphlets and whatnot. If you read what they write, if you substitute Muslims, you basically have exactly the same kind of rhetoric, you know, it's, and it's always the same. And by the way, I mean, if you read, uh, if you read speeches from the 1870s uh, in California, you get exactly the same thing also about Chinese. I mean, the Chinese, they yeah. just don't, they're incompatible. They cannot be I mean, a, a Catholic just cannot be a good Republican. I mean, not Republican in a sense political party, but Republican, what the Americans, the American system is all about, a Republic where you have Republican virtue and all of this kind of stuff. It, it just because they are not free spirited. They are basically beholden 
uh, in the Catholic uh, thing to the Vatican and, 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 and to the priests and who knows what in the case of Chinese, it's this, it's, it's this, this kind of oriental kind of despotist uh, a spirit they have uh, imbued basically with their uh, already in, in, in birth and with Muslims basically, you know, because, uh, you know, Muslims are just, uh, no, they don't, you know, I mean, because if you think, you know, you, you're going to be, you know, threatened by, by being killed, you know, literally. Yeah. Uh, uh, so you always have the same kind of notion. So the 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 rationale for ex excluding somebody is not that they happen to be Chinese. It happens because as Chinese, they basically are the carriers of a certain uh, 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 characteristics which makes make them uh, incommensurable with who we are, because we yeah. have. And this is nowadays. This is why political parties like the. FPÖ, which uh, is basically an anti-clerical party, which and an anti kind of uh, Catholic party in its roots, suddenly basically started promoting this this Christliche Abendland, you know, uh, as Strache did at the time, or by the Lega Nord, which was very very critical of the Vatican and whatnot, suddenly comes as the great protector of Catholicism. All this kind of has yeah. nothing to do with religion. Has all to do with this kind of difference, you know, and 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 we have to protect, you know, ourselves against these culturally alien ones who are invading us, who are subverting us, and who ultimately are out to transform us into an alien kind of where we are the the, the foreigners in our own country. And by the way, yeah. I mean this is exactly what the argument was in California against the Chinese and the Japanese. Yeah, you know, I mean, I, there, yeah. there were laws passed, you know, I mean, aliens could not buy land and that was targeting particularly the Japanese and, and, and to a lesser degree the Chinese. And the argument was if we give, if we allow them to buy the land, they are basically going to, you know, I mean, California is going to be a Japanese colony or something like that. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. Um... All right, let's go to the next one. So, so a neoliberal agenda describes these parties. So, uh, uh, here you cite the backslash, like a backlash against the welfare state and potential problems that the welfare state created, um, and and also uh, that that the neoliberal agenda is a weapon against establishment politics. So, can we unpack this a little bit? <laughs> No, but the thing is, I mean, first of all, I mean, this was, uh, you know, at the time, this was a mm -hmm. case. Yeah. I mean, there is a, I mean, uh, uh, Jean-Marie Lupin, he did a, a, a book, which is basically an interview he did, and uh, which at one point he said, you know, it wasn't Margaret Thatcher, it wasn't Ronald Reagan, it was me, the first one who basically adopted this kind of neoliberalism. Okay. I mean, yeah. certainly the FP and the Haida, I mean, he, he actually, he went to Harvard for a summer kind of program to, to, to study whatever. Uh, uh, he was a great admirer basically of this American kind of type of, 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 of capitalism, okay. Uh, certainly the Scandinavian parties were very, you know, I mean, anti-welfare state and whatnot, but one has to also understand the times were fundamentally very different. You know, I mean, in the Scandinavian countries, you had marginal tax rates of 80, 90%, okay. Yes. And actually, I mean, and and I mean, even even I mean, the, the socialists the, in Sweden came to the conclusion that that was counterproductive. Uh, people just not gonna work hard, or they don't want to be a doctor if if basically, you know, for each additional whatever euro or whatever, I mean, you have to pay ninety percent in taxes. You know, you may as well go to the beach. Okay. Yeah. But that was the what was was the thing at the time. It was, this was also a time when, when there were still fairly comprehensive welfare states in, in, in Western mm -hmm. Europe. And there was this kind of notion, I mean, in, 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 that there were people who were basically exploiting the welfare state, who didn't want to do. I mean, there's a famous, I mean, one of the famous kind of uh, uh, slogans was, this is in the Hängematte des Wohlfahrtsstaats ausruhen. Those who basically lie around in the hammock of the welfare state. And there were articles, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I remember there was an article about, I forgot what it was, some uh, 
some character who, who, who actually lived in, in, in Mallorca, was like Mallorca Tony in, in Germany uh, kind of thing. And he had this welfare check sent to Mallorca. You know, mm. so you had these, there was, I mean, this kind of notion that, I mean, the welfare state, the welfare state was uh, 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 being exploited by some people at the same time. Uh, uh, it was uh, a drain basically because uh, it, 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 it ultimately justified these whole, uh, these larger, uh, 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 these high tax rates in, in many of these countries. On the other hand, I mean, the second kind of, kind of thing about neoliberalism was, but that, of course, I mean, the, the, the populist right was against the left and it was yeah. against particularly the socialists, social democrats, I mean, the FPÖ, uh, against the SPÖ in, 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 in Austria. And the argument was basically, I mean, the, 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 these parties basically derived their power because of these high taxes and because they could basically distribute something, okay, yeah. through a kind of a paternalistic kind of system, which was particularly, I mean, obviously in Italy, uh, where it was certainly the case. I mean, <laughs> absolutely, it was everybody basically, you know, I mean, create, created these kind of nets, networks where, you know, I mean, if you wanted a job, you had to call a politician, blah, 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 all this kind of stuff. Uh, 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 so for, you know, let's say, the Lega Nord basically says, if we basically, I mean, what, and, and the first kind of demand was here, the taxes which we generate should stay in the north. Yeah. Secondly, I mean, and, and one of the big slogans of the Lega Nord was Roma Ladrona, Rome the big thief. They are stealing basically our money. And why? So they can basically buy votes in, in, in Naples and, and, and Syracuse and who knows where uh, uh, yeah. in, in, in the south. Okay. So neoliberalism in this kind of sense was not necessarily kind of like in America, a, 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 an economic, whatever kind, but it was the, a means to basically deprive the political establishment uh, of, uh, of their foundation of their power. And since yeah. basically, I mean, the Lega Nord said it very clearly, I mean, we want to get rid of the partitocrazia. We want to get rid of this kind of power block uh, 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 which is is destroying the country, basically. Okay. okay. Uh, so in this sense, I mean, neoliberalism was yes adopted, but it was never basically uh, a full fledged kind of uh, uh, economic program. And quite frankly, I mean, you know, only those of us who read actually these kind of things, you know, knew that the average kind of person could care less about these things. Now, in the meantime, that has fundamentally changed. I mean, there are still political parties. Most, uh, most uh, prominent is Vox in, in, in Spain, who basically are still this kind of market liberalism and whatnot. But most political parties are not like that. As a matter of fact, they have turned, they have fundamentally turned around. Yes. I mean, if you look at the Front National and the, and the, and the Marine Le Pen, uh, 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 the, the, the speeches in the early uh, uh, 2010s, uh, it becomes the social question. And she now she cited then Jaurès, uh, uh, the socialist leader. Uh, he has she has absolutely no no problem quoting Marx or or basically marking Marx kind of arguments. Uh, and now, basically, I mean, the thing is no longer kind of neoliberalism, it is really protectionism. It's protectionism yeah. against globalization. Uh, it is uh, uh, against the European Union to a certain degree. Uh, and it is fundamentally uh, 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 reviving the welfare state. You know, we have yes. to revive and strengthen the welfare state. Uh, this has a lot to do with the fact that the, the Front National, or the Rassemblement National, and nowadays is, is, a, is, is a, a political party of what in French is called the couche populaire of the lower classes. Uh, uh, the same thing was the case even before that in, 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 in the Scandinavian parties where the progress parties attracted a lot of blue color workers and, and routine type of, 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 of workers. Also the FPÖ, I mean, the FPÖ became, you know, I mean, I remember Ulram and, and, and whatever his name was, uh, uh, when they, they, who wrote a lot on the FPÖ and they called it, this is any, any Arbeiterpartei Neueren Stils, 
It's a new type of working class party, the mm -hmm. FPÖ and the Haida. And even if you look at the SVP, I mean, the SVP has taken a lot of, of, of uh, 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 votes from the SPÖ among blue collar workers, among uh, uh, routine kind of workers in services and whatnot. And of course, okay. if you have that, then yeah, suddenly the question of the welfare state becomes a big, in, 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 a big issue. And then basically, I mean, the question becomes, I mean, how to shore up the welfare state? And the answer generally is uh, only the deserving should get and the deserving or first of all, I mean, our citizens and not all these foreigners, refugees and all this kind of stuff. And secondly, I mean, uh, there's a recognition, interesting enough, uh, uh, that uh, uh, the welfare state depends on solidarity. And solidarity can only be, be if basically the people are defined in a certain way which uh, uh, ties into this kind of notion of solidarity. So when yeah, you look at this, can, I mean, protection, we actually... welfare chauvinism, uh, 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 and anti-globalization kind of rhetoric, I mean, this kind of thing, it, 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 it's, it's a very left-wing actually, kind of uh, at a time when the left has fundamentally abandoned these kind of things yeah that i was going to just going to say that and this all ties back to the next point which is uh, you know the social cost of modernization and uh, and uh, i mean you listed that as part of the part of the coalition that uh, these uh, these radical populist parties were were able to build is is uh, suddenly society needed higher skilled jobs uh, the lower skilled labor was more marginalized, uh, underpaid, uh, potentially out of their jobs. So this all ties back to that as well, right? Yeah, I mean, the thing is, I mean, I, uh, nowadays anywhere, I mean, the, the, if you look at, 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 uh, at what is happening, I mean, it's, it's, it's a fairly uh, complex kind of, kind of picture. It says, because a lot of these things are coming together. I mean, on the one hand, you do have globalization, which has entailed delocalization, outsourcing, and all of this kind of stuff. I mean, it's not for nothing the, uh, the Rassemblée Nationale gets a lot of votes in the north of, of France, where you have an industrial kind of uh, wasteland. It's not for nothing that Trump got, you know, I mean, whatever in Ohio and Pennsylvania and Michigan and whatnot, where you have exactly these kind of things. At the same time, you have now this the, the growing kind of well challenge of automation that even if factories come back, they come back, but they don't hire anybody because the machines run 24 hours a day. Uh, uh, then you have the pressure for people, they have to, to kind of, uh, you know, retrain and, and whatnot, but there are no programs for retraining. Uh, uh, then you have a, a growing, uh, the growing kind of, I mean, the, the most important challenge is basically the drifting of, fundamental drifting apart of metropolitan areas and the hinterland, not yeah. just in the United States, but also in Europe, okay, uh, where rural areas are falling more and more behind. Uh, uh, you have, the, you have these, these, these urban kind of coalitions. Uh, uh, which explain why in, why Biden won basically, but also the the, the kind of uh, a rural back you know back water whatever you want to call it kind of coalitions. So you get increasing kind of polarization as a result of this uh, of the whole kind of thing. Uh, then you have the 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 fundamental transformation internationally of of the position of of these blocks. I mean. If anybody had told me that, you know, I mean, China would, go, yes, I mean, my wife happens to be Chinese, and I happen to have been in, in, in Beijing and in Shanghai and whatnot, you know, but I mean, if you look at, you know, I mean, how rapidly China has, 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 has changed, yeah. uh, nobody would have predicted that. And uh, so there is just uh, a lot of, of anxiety and, and, and whatnot, which is perfectly understandable. You know, I mean, people are uh, bombarded with, with, with all of these kind of things and, and, and you know, not for nothing, you know, I mean, 
if you look at it, you know, I mean, you have now a lot of nostalgia among tons of people who want to go back to the good old days, you know, but uh, it's not going to happen. Yeah. You know? I mean, now nostalgia is even going back to, to, to 2019 when, you know, I mean, you didn't have to run around with masks and all of this kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, I'm serious. I mean, you know, I mean, it's absolutely, when you look at it, it's absolutely yeah. in, in, in the case. Uh, it's not for nothing that, you know, in Germany now, you know, I mean, people like Robert, Roberto Blanco, who were the Schlager singer, who, who were these, these singers in, in the 1980s, you know, now they are singing in front of full, you know, I mean, my generation, people, my generation go to these concerts because, oh, I, yeah, that was, I remember, you know, I mean, I was a concert in 1970, you know. Well, you know, I mean, the Rolling Stones are still around, you know, I mean, that kind of yes, stuff. Yes, yes. Yeah, uh, there is, people feel very uneasy about so many things, and, and they are so anxious about so many things. And uh, uh, obviously, I mean, these are these structural kind of conditions which create a lot of these uh, 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 emotions which then ultimately can be used by somebody who is you know, clever enough to appeal to this. I mean, Trump, you know, obviously, I mean, he, he played to a lot of these emotions yeah. among, among people. Uh, uh, even, and then you don't even have to come up with any kind of solutions because you ain't got no solutions anyway. But at least, basically, I mean, you, you I mean, I, I, the other day when I wrote something, uh, it occurred to me, you know, it is exactly, you remind me of Bill Clinton saying, I feel your pain. Yes. And this is what, you know, I mean, what they do, I feel your pain, I emphasize, I'm one of you. I mean, I, 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 you know, I don't know whether there's a billionaire, I mean, you know, but anyway, I mean, somebody like Trump to say, I feel your pain, I empathize with you, I mean, it's, it's the most ridiculous kind of notion, you know, yeah. that he manages to do, you know, and manages to do that, you know. Yeah. So you gave the 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 paper the conclusion title or the conclusion the title of uh, the postmodern right mm -hmm. curious title what, what did you what did you mean by that post Pardon? postmodern postmodern right was the title <laughs> of the of the conclusion so what did you mean by that well that was my that was uh, you know again when i yeah. in the 1980s in the late 1980s Mm -hmm. I mean, the big, uh, on, 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 I mean, I was always fascinated by cultural kind of things anyway. Uh, I mean, the big thing was postmodernism. And again, it was one of these things where everybody kind of, you know, wrote stuff about postmodernism, but nobody really understood quite well what the whole damn thing was. Yeah. But in, in a sense, I mean, no, I mean, but, but it's, 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 uh, 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 and that has something to do with populism. You know, I mean, the thing is that, uh, uh, who was it? Uh, ah, La Convention Postmoderne, who wrote that? Uh, Lyotard. There's, there's this French philosopher. He wrote this, uh, he wrote a, uh, a report actually for the Quebec government, I think it was, and it's called La Condition Postmoderne, the postmodern condition. And in which he basically says that postmodernism is basically, I mean, the, the end of the great narratives. Of, 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 of modernity, okay? Namely, for example, progress. At a time when, when the, and I mean, nowadays, yeah, but at the time there was yeah, an environmental kind of thing. I mean, it was this kind of notion. It was an, an environmental kind of crisis. People did no longer believe in progress that things were gonna get better, 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 better. better. Uh, uh, there was no longer to believe, I mean, Marxism basically had run, it, had run it, its course. I mean, you know, I mean, there was forget about the, I mean, uh, André Gors at the time wrote Adieu au proletariat, I mean, farewell to the proletariat, forget about the role of the proletariat, all of these kind of things. So there was this kind of notion that uh, 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 these, 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 uh, what, 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 what postmodernists call the meta narratives, uh, uh, which ultimately were the foundations of political programs which sustained political programs because, and, and, and which gave them some kind of sense that that was gone, okay? Now, under these kind of, kind of, kind of, kind of circumstances, uh, 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 politics, what, what is politics if you don't have a vision any longer? And this is, I mean, the, the populists never claim to have a vision. 
Yeah. Okay? They just basically said here, you know, I mean, it's their fault. Okay. This and blah, blah, blah. And in a sense, I mean, in, and I did not, I had not read Laclau. Uh, but if you read Laclau, if you read his, the, the, on, 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 on populist reason, if you read particularly the fourth and the fifth chapter on populist reason, I mean, well, he basically lines out this kind of thing. This is exactly what they have done. I mean, he starts out with the notion kind of, you, you don't do ideology. You start out with, you know, I mean, the, the lowest, lowest kind of uh, Baustein, uh, the lowest uh, brick in, 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 in this uh, theory, and this is demands. Okay, mm -hmm. and you start out, you know, I mean, in this and, and, and demands can either be met or not. If they are not met, uh, uh, then they turn into grievances. And these grievances are directed against the, the, those who fundamentally don't meet them. And if you have tons of these demands which are unmet and tons of these kind of grievances, maybe then these people kind of uh, come to the conclusion, maybe there's something wrong with the political system. Maybe there's something yeah. wrong with, with the establishment, basically. And that becomes the new, that becomes this new kind of rationale for politics. And in a sense, but this is what happened with the Greens. I mean, the Greens were against nuclear power, they were for the and, and their demands were not met. And so they fundamentally said, well, maybe we should vote for ourselves. And that's what yes. they did. And then they became a political party. Okay, but there is no no overriding, there's no overriding kind of big narrative which drives this. And this is in this sense, I mean, uh, I thought at the time, without having read any of these, I mean, now I, you know, I mean, I can make these arguments, you know, you know, left, right and center. But at the time I had absolutely, I did, did not know, but I, I did have this kind of feeling that uh, 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 these political parties basically uh, uh, had very little in terms of program and, and certainly no vision or anything. So the reason basically they were successful was not because they had an attractive kind of program or an attractive kind of vision, but because they appealed to all of these ressentiments, uh, anxieties, blah, 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 whatever it was. Uh, and that ultimately was enough for them, uh, for voters to vote for them. And if you know anything, I mean, if there were, uh, I, tons of of of, uh, of service in France would say, and would you want uh, uh, Jean-Marie Le Pen to be president? And ninety percent of people who voted for them said, absolutely no. Okay. <laughs> I'm serious. No way we want him. But they wanted him as basically the the knüppel, you know, as the the baseball bat to hit the others over the head. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and then if, 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 if you make this kind of argument, I mean, then you have to, then you, you, your explanations for why things happen change. I mean, I, I, <laughs> I gave last year, no, before COVID-19, two years ago, I, I was at, uh, in Lausanne and, and, and at, uh, at the colloquium and uh, we were talking about, pop I forgot what it was. And I dare to say, Ultimately, I mean, what made the Front National big was Mitterrand. Mitterrand's mm -hmm. so-called U-turn in 83, when he fundamentally, I mean, was confronted with a reality. The reality was either you go bankrupt as a country or you adopt basically kind of the, what came to be known as the Front Fort, as, 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 as discipline imposed by the Germans. And he fundamentally did that. And French workers felt completely betrayed, created a lot of resentment. And where do they go? They go to the Front National. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and you can, I mean, these kinds of uh, uh, episodes you can find in, 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 in many kinds of things. I mean, give you another example, I mean, the AfD in, in, in Germany. Uh, mm -hmm. It was this, you know, I mean, the, 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 first of all, it was, uh, it was, you know, the Germans bailing out the Greeks. Yeah. Then it was Merkel saying, wir schaffen das, and having more, almost a million refugees coming within a very short period of time into Germany. Okay. 
And then actually, if you look at, at, at if you look closer to what is happening in, in, with the AfD, I mean, the AfD is an Eastern party. It's a party of the former East Germany. It is yes. very strong in Saxony in, 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 in Turing and in Thuringia, but also in other parts, but particularly in these kind of, kind of things. And here you have, a, you have tons of, of people there who still say today, and you know, I mean, I'm not pulling that out of my, you know, behind. It's, it's based uh, every year actually in Saxony and in Turing and they do a, a big survey, which is called the Saxon and Turing Monitor. And there is one statement there, we here are still treated as if we were citizens, second class citizens. And you get over 50% of respondents saying, absolutely, that is absolutely correct, okay? So it, you, you, you have, uh, uh, and, and there is a, a deep, a deep sense of betrayal among a lot of these kind of people who were promised at the time, you know, this blossoming landscapes as Cole said, and uh, 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 who, who, who are being told over and over in newspapers and on television and whatnot that what they did all their lives basically during the GDR is absolutely for nothing. It's worthless, you know, whatever these kind of things. And, and they've had it. And somebody comes along, in this case, the AfD, and they vote for the AfD. Before that, they voted for, for the PDS, for the ex-communists, you know. But then the ex-communists made this deal with, with the Western left. And now they are looking at yeah. the Linke as basically a Western party. And now they're voting for the, uh, for the AfD left. Uh, so, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's a little bit more complex and complicated and whatnot than all these people who, who write these wonderful kind of articles on the basis of a survey which they have from 1993, uh, from, from 2000 and, and whatnot, where they plug in all these, all these wonderful kind of things and then they come up with something, you know, I mean, the, the reality on the ground is quite different. You know? Yeah. And that makes it much more complicated or also much more difficult to get to, you know, to heart of it. You know, I mean, the, you know, one should, we shouldn't kid, kid ourselves. I mean, the thing, these, these parties have been around for a long time. For a long time, you know, the established political parties have said, you know, this is terrible, you should vote for them, blah, 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 all this kind of stuff. They're still around. And yeah. in some cases, doing very well. Yeah. Okay. It has not worked. I mean, this kind of thing has not worked. I mean, there are no easy solutions. You know, I mean, one solution always is what we, we really got to, to, to teach people to be good Democrats or something like that. You know, I mean, it's just, yeah, yeah. It shouldn't be, they shouldn't be xenophobic, you know, blah, 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 all this kind of <laughs> stuff. Another one is to isolate them. If we just isolate them, then people are going to forget about them. Yeah. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Yeah. And even the strategy of, of basically integrating them, and then we're going to demask them. We're going to show yeah. that they are basically empty. That hasn't worked either. Yeah. I mean, if you look at the FPÖ, I mean, this is what, what Schüssel at the time tried from the FPÖ ÖVB. They're going to uh, de 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 FPÖ demaskieren to basically show that there is nothing behind them. Well, it did not destroy the FPÖ. Haider died. Strache came along. He got them back to 27, to, uh, 30 percent. Okay. Yeah. Uh, none of you know. I mean, we we haven't yet come up with a good strategy. Yeah. Now there are good strategy, but politician, but the political side doesn't want to do it. I mean. One of the reasons why why all of this is happening is is, is inequality. I mean, inequality has never. I mean, it's unbelievable. I mean, there are people who make so much money they don't even know what to do with it. With, with it, and other people, I mean, they have a hard time. You know, I read in in, in the U.S. over fifty percent of the population, if 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 the car breaks down, and and the repair costs four hundred dollars, they don't have the money. Yeah, okay? I mean, that's the reality. Okay. Yeah. Now, <laughs> obviously, they are, you know, I mean, going after the Amazons, which don't pay one cent of, 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 of taxes. Amazon, which is now number one ahead of, 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 of Alphabet, which is Google. 
in terms of revenue, paid zero in taxes two years ago in the United States. Apple, you know, in Ireland yeah. didn't pay the taxes and the Irish government actually uh, 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 was celebrating when the European courts basically said that uh, 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 Apple uh, did not have that the, the, that the arrangements they had made with the Irish government, which had, would have given the Irish government, I don't know, 100 million or 200 million, who cares? You know? yeah. And then Ireland comes afterwards and to the European Union and said, we need money because we have to fight the pandemic. You know? Then uh, 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 progressive income tax. You know? I mean, instead we have these highly regressive income uh, taxes where the people who don't have very much, they pay 21% in, 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 in value added tax. And yeah. the, the people who have a lot of money, I mean, they, they pay close to, to not very much in, in, in income taxes, okay? Yeah. Then uh, uh, taxing, uh, taxing uh, uh, again, you know, I mean, capital gains, for example, which also in the US was basically cut down, which all yeah. of these things benefit those people who already have something. Uh, and then they wonder why there's so much uh, anger and, and, and resentment, you know, doesn't, doesn't surprise me, but they don't want to yeah. do anything about it, you know, because yeah. they only, I mean, first of all, because they, you know, the lobbyists and who knows what, they're in the pockets. I mean, look what has happened in Texas, you know, with yeah. in, 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 in this kind of thing, you know, and anyway, I mean, it's too disgusting as far as I'm concerned when it comes yeah. down to it. And then I have okay. to say, you know, and then to say to the people, hey, you know, you stupid assholes, you know, you voted for Marine Le Pen, you know, I mean, <laughs> please, yeah. please, you know, I mean, mm -hmm. you have absolutely no right, you know, to, to say these kind of things if you're not really willing, you know, to, to face your voters. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, a final point on, on this, actually, and I, because I'm reading now a I'm reading, uh, I'm reading on the Jacksonian period because that was a, the, the first kind of uh, important populist kind of mobilization in the United States. And there's a book on, uh, I don't know whether you know the book, it's called White Trash. No, I should, I should know it. <laughs> if you don't know, no, I mean, I'm serious. I mean, why, mm -hmm. it's called White Trash, which basically gives the history of uh, 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 the underclass, the white underclass in the United States. Okay, but it's not just in the U.S. You know, I mean, you have it in Britain. You know, where they came up with this this term chaffs. You know, I mean, all these. You know, I mean, there, there's actually a famous or infamous word, 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 kind of thing of a, a shadow, a labor shadow, uh, a minister who stands in front of a of a house with a white a white van and and two English flags out there. And she mocks these, mocks the people basically. Uh, a, a, I didn't know a white van, but a, a white van basically means somebody who is a plumber or something like that. You made fun of these kind of people. Her constituency, okay? And she had to, there was a shit storm and she had to kind of leave. But it is a reflection of what, what I've, you know, a number of us have written about, which is basically the fact that those up there, be it urban kind of uh, uh, intellectual and elite, they have nothing but contempt when it comes down to it for ordinary people. And actually Hillary Clinton, when she said, you know, I mean, the people who voted for Trump, they are these racist, blah, 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 you know, I mean, deplorables. Mm. Okay, is a typical example of that. Or when a uh, 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 Gloria Stein uh, feminist uh, in the New York Times basically writes an article about chiding women who voted for Trump, you know, that they betray, you know, whatever. I mean, that showed again, you know, how stupid people are, you know, this kind of notion. And people are, they don't take it any longer. They are sick and tired of being constantly, you know, told how, how stupid they are, how, you know, ignorant, blah, 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 all this kind of stuff. And then turn around and say, but vote for me. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and that is, you know, I mean, in, in there is actually, if you read, and that's that's something about, you know, why I'm ambiguous about populism in general. I mean, this is, uh, uh, I don't know whether you know the, the article by Jensen on populist mobilization. Yeah. Uh, he writes in there, at one point he writes, and what what 
you know, people like like uh, uh, Peron, uh, and my favorite uh, uh, populist leader is Gaetan in, in 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 Colombia, who unfortunately got assassinated before the election. You know, said so what they do, they actually give. Uh, uh, some sense of pride and some sense of recognition to people. Yeah. And I think, I mean, in a funny kind of way, I mean, this is, this is what, uh, ironically, Trump did. Yes, absolutely. When he talked to people, I mean, he, he said, you know, I mean, I, you know, I like the uneducated or something like that. You know? Yes. And, and, and you know, whatever, but uh, there were, uh, and, and if you read some of that, uh, there's the, 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 the book on, on Wisconsin, on, uh, uh, which is called yeah. also uh, Kathy Kramer. Politics of Resentment, right? Yes. And, and she, she did actually afterwards a, 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 a little oracle in which, where she wrote about, it, and she said she went to these pubs and whatnot and talked to people, and people said, the thing is, they don't listen to us. We don't count. Yeah. Okay, yes. you don't count. And, of, and, and, and Hillary Clinton didn't even want to go to these people. She didn't want to go. I mean, she'd rather go to Hollywood and, and to a, a, a Dine than go actually to, to people on the ground in Indiana or who knows where. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and she actually, and, 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 and Trump went to these kind of people. The same Marine Le Pen. I mean, Marine Le Pen actually went out into the boonies in northern in in in, in northern France and, and and talked to people and took them seriously okay and the same in 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 the eastern part of Germany I mean you know again I mean it was this kind of notion after the AfD got 30 percent of the vote in in, in Sachsen all these Frankfurt Allgemeine Zeitung and Süddeutsche Zeitung und die Welt all these journalists going there to find out what, you know, all these people are racist or whatnot. Yeah. And they said, no, I mean, you know, they don't listen to us. Yeah. <laughs> they don't take us seriously. You know? yes. Again, we don't count. Okay. And the, uh, 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 in particular in Latin America, I mean, populists, if you look at, at, at decamisados, for example, the notion of decamisados, which comes from, from, you know, I mean, working class kind of who went out there in when it was hot. And because it was yeah. hot, they took off their shirts in a city, Buenos Aires, where you shouldn't walk around without a suit, okay? Yeah. Because it was just not civilized, that kind of stuff. And of course, they were called then uncivilized and whatnot. And Peron uh, uh, says the camisados becomes a badge of honor. Or in Gaetan, it's Chusma, which is the Opschaum, you know, it's kind of the Drek, you know, whatnot. And he says, yeah, I'm, you know, part of that Chusma. Okay. It is giving, yes, I mean, it's giving recognition to people. Yeah. yeah. And that is very, I mean, this is also one of the reasons why these parties have had so much staying power. power. Yeah, they were the first yeah. ones who took these things or pretended whatever these mm -hmm. uh, these grievances seriously, adopted them and basically used them against the other side. Okay. Yeah. And that is what yeah. is called tribunus plebis, <laughs> a tribune of the ordinary people. And as long yes. as they manage, basically, I mean, to play this kind of role. Uh, 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 then you know they have a good chance, basically, to persist. Yeah, yeah. but I mean, but these these um, these this adoption of, of of their case does not necessarily translate into policy, which is what bothers me. If it if it would, it would be better, but but it doesn't. No, I mean absolutely. I mean I agree with you. And, yeah. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and and for me, I mean, I mean, I, I actually looked at the FPÖ when Strohe was in, in the thing. And uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's even worse. It's not just that they, no, I mean, they do exactly the opposite. I mean, the, exactly. the, the, actually the FPÖ, a lot of the things were for the rich. A lot of the measures they, they, they did were for the rich. Yeah, uh, so Trump, a lot of the Trump cuts well. basically were for ordinary kind of people. And yeah. it's this, I mean, you know, I mean, but that is, I mean, again, I mean, if we, if, if, if one wants to really kind of uh, 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 do something against, uh, I mean, it, it's, it's to, sh to just constantly basically 
uh, uh, do the hard work and 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 look what do they actually do for these people. Yeah. And then say here, you know, I mean, you know, I mean, let's, you know, in German we say jemand ein Wort nehmen, you know, I mean, to take them at their word. Yeah. Yeah. Here, these are the claims you make, you know, I mean, why don't you do then anything about it? Okay, for these people. If you say we are for, you know, ordinary kind of people, you know, what have you done for ordinary people? You know, and yeah. from my kind of thing is, I mean, whether it's the SVP here in, in, in Switzerland, whether it's the FPÖ, and I, I mean, the Fonas, I mean, the, the Marine Le Pen hasn't been in any position to do anything. Kind of but where they have been in, 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 in power, they have to, done hardly anything or not very much. For people, yeah. I mean, it, it, I always, you know, I mean, if you look at, for example, in uh, in uh, uh, Norway, mm -hmm. the uh, Party for ages in their election program, because, you know, in, in in Norway, they have a, uh, a oil fund. Yes. Okay, and uh, a certain percentage of the oil fund goes every year then into social programs and whatnot. And actually, the 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 Franskist party for ages made the demand that the percentage should be raised, and it should go, for example, to hospitals and for the elderly and all this kind of stuff. And then she, uh, uh, Steve Jensen, uh, the leader of the thing, became a, a, a member of government, and then they actually voted to even to lower actually to reduce the percentage. Okay, with yeah. the argument, you know, I mean, we have you know hard times and whatnot. We can't afford to do that. Okay, <laughs> yeah, I'm serious, you know. Yeah, and this is in 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 one of the richest countries in the world, you know. Uh, uh, so you know, I mean, no, you know, no. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I almost yeah. almost feel like that Viktor Orban is uh, is doing better on this dimension, <laughs> and maybe maybe Duterte is as well. So. Uh, yeah, but I can tell so, you one thing. I mean, I actually I wrote on. I mean, I looked into what you know, Trump. Uh, I mean, mm -hmm. I wrote a, a bunch. I wrote a, a bunch of small pieces on 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 Trump and his legacy. One of the things Trump said, for example, I mean, with me, coal is gonna be now. I'm perfectly against coal, absolutely mm -hmm. against coal. Okay, but you know, coal is you know rival of coal. Yeah, never in post-war history has coal declined as much as during the last four years. Yeah. Okay? Never have so many coal mines closed and people yeah. lost their job as a result for the very simple reason that, that uh, uh, coal mining companies says, we, you know, it, I mean, it's too expensive. I mean, we have yeah. to, we would have to do this and yeah, we're not gonna do this kind of stuff, you know. Or if you look at, at his famous wall, <laughs> yeah. actually the wall was already built during during the Obama uh, kind of thing, you know, whatnot. Yeah. What they did was just basically repair, do repair work, and then they sell this as, you know, we, you know, built a wall. No, they didn't. Okay, absolutely not. A lot of the stuff he did was symbolic kind of politics. Yeah. catering you know to 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 their kind of constituents it was things that didn't cost very much yeah but when it comes but, down to it you know forget it uh, yeah but it, but it still goes back to that notion of of even the supporters knew that um, he's not going to build a wall and mexico is not going to pay for it they knew that but it felt right it felt like what they want <laughs> and and it felt like somebody's paying attention to what they want and that's uh that's that's what worked, right? Yeah, but it, you know, if you're the president of the United States, I mean, you know, I mean, you, 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 uh, I mean, you, you actually could do it, possibly, right? No, I mean, they, you know, I mean, it's not that they, they, they did a hell of a lot of stuff, which is, you know, quite terrible. I mean, when you look at the environmental, all the environmental regulation, which they basically uh, yeah. abolished, if you look at all the, particularly the judges, which they put into, you know, districts yeah. and, 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 and these kind of things and including, and then having this, 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 you know, I mean, I'm Catholic, you know, I mean, nominally Catholic, you know, but when I, 
Mm -hmm. I mean, I understand Catholics, you know, but I, I don't, I didn't even understand, you know, where this woman who is now a Supreme Court judge, where she's coming from. I mean, it's, yeah. you know, I mean, <laughs> yeah. I mean, but she would be there without, with or without Trump. That's that's how he catered to the religious right. But now we're going off topic. All right, tell me about what you're working on now. You're still working on resentment, right? I wouldn't say I'm working. I'm I'm trying to to uh, kind of conceptualize in my head first, and then in writing. Uh, a kind of uh, uh, a plausible, convincing, um, more or less comprehensive kind of kind of uh, 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 scenario argument in, in how we un can understand these things uh, across yeah. and that across time and space. I mean, I've written bits and pieces of that in 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 in, in various kind of things. Uh, at the same I mean, and I, at the same time, I'm trying to understand more on on some like I always I always uh, was curious about the Jacksonian period, which I really didn't know with the Jackson kind of presidency. And actually now mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm starting to read on the Jacksonian kind of kind of period, and 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 uh, together with a colleague of mine, Zurich. Uh, who, who actually collected uh, speeches from presidents and from all presidents. He has, I don't know how many 70 speeches mm -hmm. Jackson gave. And, and I mean, the, the, the one aspect of the whole thing, it's, it's, very, it's very simple to say, you know, the, you know, the appeal to resentment. Where and how? Yeah. And actually, I mean, I've read, you know, I mean, speeches which Marine Le Pen gave. And you think, I mean, you know, I'm the Front National, you know, blah, blah, blah. It's difficult to find something, yeah. Hmm. Where they actually, I mean, how do they do it in, in, in you know, how do you mobilize, you know, people uh, uh, on, a, on this emotional kind of side? And, and that is actually, that I, I, it's much more difficult than I expected. I said, I have no problem, you know, you read a speech and they are saying it all, <laughs> they don't. It's not, <laughs> unless, unless you're, and I'm not a semiologist or a, a, a discourse uh, analyst and whatnot, and, unless you basically uh, are trained in, in, in reading, but then I have a hard time where the ordinary kind of people read these things in, in that kind of way. But, and that is, I mean, we, we, you know, I mean, I know you guys have done a lot of stuff on, on, on you know, I mean, populism, I mean, on, on this kind mm -hmm. of populism. And is somebody a populist or not on the basis of, of, of discourse and whatnot? Uh, uh, and, and I think, I mean, given the fact that that the whole em in, that emotions are increasingly as seen as, as 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 very important as to to populist kind of mobilization. Give an example. I mean, the uh, Swiss Political Science Review is not somebody is not something which people read. But the most cited article in there is exactly on anger and 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 and, and whatnot, in the context of this 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 special issue on populism. Uh, yeah. uh, so emotions are in are becoming an important kind of thing. I mean, even in 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 top journals, I mean, you have articles on it now. Uh, so the question then really becomes empirically. I mean, how do we know these things? You yeah. know, I mean, we, we write a lot about, you know, people are anxious and all of this kind of stuff. Uh, but how do you how do you appeal to anxieties? I mean, concretely in a, in, in, in a text, uh, I, I think I, I sent you that uh, that uh, link to what the Sveriche Demokratina did in, 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 in 2000. I forgot what it was, that election mm -hmm. clip. It's yeah. much easier to do it to, uh, 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 in, in terms of images. Yes. I mean, if you, and I, I would, you know, I mean, give it to your students, you know, I mean, to just it's mm -hmm. 30 seconds and ask yes. them, you know, what the, what, what, what's the reaction to it, you know? Uh, and and it, 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 it really does something. Or the, the Dance Party in 2001, I think, in, they did a whole book, which is called Dit Land Dit this country, this choice. 
And it's, if you, it has all these pictures in it. And it has these pictures of these nice, you know, Danish families. And then you have pictures actually of Berlin Kreuzberg, which is a Turkish, very Turkish kind of, yeah. kind of, kind of, uh, kind of area. This, this contrast between, again, this the nostalgic kind of recall of the intact kind of landscape. And then you have this, you know, invasion mm -hmm. basically of this alien culture. Or uh, the SVP does it. I mean, it did it with 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 this famous, the famous kind of thing on 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 this anti uh, minaret kind of initiative, where yeah, it's Switzerland yeah, yeah. and you have these minarets, but they all look like like uh, uh, missiles coming mm -hmm. out of the ground. They did it with their with a, a thing where they had the the, 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 the images of of different people. And then said, you know, I mean, Ivan, Ivan, uh, uh, thief, or whatever kind of stuff. Or they have it when they appeal to nostalgia, where they have this wonderful kind of uh, chalet in in the mountains, kind of thing. You know, this is what Switzerland is all about. And now look, you know, and then you get a picture of Bern and and all these Muslims basically praying in front of the of the national parliament. Uh, mm -hmm. There it is actually, I mean, it's relatively simple. Maybe this is how they do it. You know, maybe, yeah. maybe actually the real appeal is through images and not through discourse. Yeah. And, and the Lega Nord had, I mean, they the had a famous, you know, I mean, it's, it's uh, 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 Roma Ladrona, it had this, 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 this matron, uh, this Italian matron with uh, the chicken and the chicken lay an egg. And underneath was was Rome with with the big basket, you know, kind of thing. I mean, immediately, you know, I mean, you have a, a, a yeah. reaction to it, an emotional kind of reaction to it. But in yeah. in discourses, in speeches, and whatnot, it's much more difficult, I think. Though, I mean, if you if you if we're going back to 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 Jackson, I mean, they they did not have the facilities to print large posters like like we have today. They certainly didn't have television. I mean, all they had was the newspaper. So, I mean, maybe that's already possible to to but analyze the out. I mean, newspapers. He, I mean, yeah. There are pictures of him where he stands on a on a, a carriage, you know, and gives gives a speech and whatnot. And actually. Even in the populist periods in the 1880s, 1890s, I mean, the, the, the populists actually had orators who went mm -hmm. out into the countryside yeah, and of basically, you know, gave speeches and whatnot. I mean, one of the most famous is Mary Lees, who is uh, uh, this woman from Kansas, uh, yeah. uh, who gave a very famous, gave a very famous shows. I mean, uh, Wall Street owns the country, uh, mm -hmm. uh, which I always use with my populism class and have them read it and say, you know, <laughs> who said that and say, occupy, occupy Wall Street. And say, no, it's, it's 1891, no. you know, I mean, yeah. <laughs> it's, it, it's very pertinent, you know, I mean, this kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, uh, so that is, that's one thing that, that kind of interests me. Uh, but generally, I mean, what I, I mean, uh, many kind of, kind of, kind of aspects of, of, of this, which I find, you know, interesting. And uh, now I have the leisure because I'm, I'm kind of semi-retired to, to do whatever I want. <laughs> yes, you know, I mean, I just write these now smaller kind of, uh, kind of analytical essays on, 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 on various aspects of things, you know. Yeah. Well, cool. Well, thank you so much for our long chat, but very, very interesting uh, about this topic. So thank you very much for, for joining. Nothing at all. It was a great pleasure.